So in my last video, I told you guys about Windows 10 AME, which is a set of scripts that let you deep load Windows 10 and remove as much telemetry, spyware and data collection services as possible. Now, even though some people did have a certain trouble getting through the first 15 seconds of the video before leaving a comment, someone who maybe likes Linux and BSD but can't use them, can't use them, can't use them, can't use them. Most of you guys seem to enjoy it and that's great. But let's get back to the topic of this video. I mean, you've seen the title, you know what it's going to be about. And I want to apologize for some misinformation that I put in my previous video about AME. If you watch it, you probably remember me mentioning that DirectX 12 games don't work at all on Windows 10 AME. A lot of people expressed valid concerns about that in the comments. And I mean, installing Windows for games and not being able to play those games is kind of stupid. So I decided to test some DirectX 12 games myself on Windows 10 AME and spoiler alert, I was wrong. Despite the official AME documentation saying that DirectX 12 games don't work at all on this version of Windows, all the games that I tested today ran just fine with no issues at all. But the question that I want to answer today is, do these games run as well on Windows 10 AME as they do on vanilla Windows, since DirectX 12 is tied very closely with Windows Update, and what if AME users are missing on some critical runtime updates that make games perform better? So in order to answer those questions, I'm going to test those games on a normal vanilla Windows 10 2004 installation with all the fresh updates and drivers, as well as on a ameliorated one also with all the newest drivers and updates, and compare them against each other to see whether there's maybe any kind of difference whatsoever. And I'm also going to throw my Arch Linux installation there, because why the hell not? After all, some people did find using Windows for games almost insulting, since nowadays Linux runs all the games just fine and some games run even better on Linux than on Windows, right? So I'm gonna run those games on Linux, compare the results with Windows installations, and see if I could indeed just install Linux. The games were chosen without any kind of preference, I just googled DirectX 12 games and picked some that looked interesting, and I didn't cherry pick any games to show off their Linux performance. I also included Doom Eternal in my tests, even though it's not DirectX 12, but Vulkan, but I thought it would be cool to compare Vulkan performance with DirectX 12 performance on Linux and Windows. My test bench is Ryzen 2600 running at 3.7 GHz, 32 GB of DDR4 memory, running at 3000 MHz CL16 and NVIDIA GeForce 2060 Super. So without further ado, let's get into the results. The first game that I tested was Resident Evil 3, which is my personal favorite. RE Engine is very well optimized and this game showed some of the highest numbers across all three setups. The difference between stock Windows 10 and the AME version is negligible, with 155 FPS on average on AME, and 151 FPS for stock Windows. Spoiler alert, this will pretty much be the case for all of the games, but I still wanted to test whether Windows 10 AME is missing on some important DX12 runtimes, so there you go, it isn't. On Linux, we see pretty respectable performance as well, with 143 FPS on average and 92 FPS for 1% figures. It is definitely lower than Windows, and we do lose about 10 to 12 FPS, but that's totally expected and the game is still perfectly playable. The next game on our list is Metro Exodus. Metro Exodus actually does have a built-in benchmarking tool, but for some reason I couldn't run it on Linux. The game itself ran just fine, scoring just a little bit lower than Windows, with 103 FPS on average and 70 FPS for 1%. Doom Eternal ran very well on all three setups with ultra settings, as you can see, with 183 FPS on average and 138 FPS 1% on stock Windows 10, as well as 178 FPS on average and 137 FPS for 1% on AME. On Linux, we'll also see some good performance with 161 FPS on average and 128 FPS for 1%. Doom games are very well optimized and I'm still very surprised by just how well they run on all platforms. Grid was actually specified as DX12 only in this list of DirectX 12 games from this website, so I wanted to test it because if it wouldn't launch, it would be immediately clear that the AME doesn't support DX12 games. But as we already saw, it does support them just fine, so there's that. We got 84 FPS on average and 66 FPS for 1%, and on stock Windows we see 83 FPS average and 61 FPS for 1%. On Linux, once again, we see very solid performance with 76 FPS on average and 51 FPS for 1%. Grid is pretty much the only game that dips below 60 FPS on Linux, but it could also be that I didn't wait enough for DXVK shaders to compile because they do take some time on the first run, and while they're doing that, the game will be a little bit stuttery. That being said, I didn't notice any visible stutter in the game itself and it ran very smooth. 
And the last game on the list is Control, and it's actually a very cool game with its own creepy and weird ambience. Say, seriously, guys, you should be thankful that I'm not a bread tuber because otherwise I would make a three-hour-long video just fanboying over this game. Performance-wise, we see high 70s on average and around 66 FPS for 1% figures on Windows installations, as well as 75% average, 56 FPS, 1% figures on Linux. Once again, very impressive performance on Linux with only a few FPS lost. I did, however, see a little bit more stutter than I would like, and that's kind of a shame. You can actually see in the video that the game stutters quite a lot. So to answer the initial question of this video, is it true that DirectX 12 games don't run on Windows 10 AME? No, obviously that's not true. All the games that I tested today run just fine and they run as well as a stock Windows 10 and I do apologize for the misleading information in my previous video. But I do want to address the elephant in the room and that is Linux. I'm sure most of you will remember the time where getting a game to run on Linux was a nightmare. And if you did somehow manage to get it running, it would run with much worse performance, visual artifacts, glitches, errors, and so on. But as you saw in this video, all five games that I chose ran very well on Linux with just a few FPS less than on Windows, thanks to DXVK. But what's more important, if you want to get a Steam game to run on Linux, it literally requires no effort at all. Just one checkbox in the settings and Steam will do everything for you. With non-Steam games, it's a little bit more tricky, but still, it took me about 20 minutes to figure everything out, so yeah. So then, Windows is dead, right? We should just install Linux since the performance is almost as good as on Windows. Well, not quite. Even though the performance difference that we saw on this hardware was pretty much negligible, if you're playing on Intel GPU or dedicated graphics that is pretty old, 5 to 15 FPS might be the difference between playable and PowerPoint slideshow. <laughs> And then there are eSports titles such as Valorant and League of Legends, which are very tricky to run on Linux due to intrusive anti-cheat systems, and in some games you're even risking a lifetime ban for using Linux. Of course, this is not the fault of Linux, but of the game developers that introduce such technologies to their games, but at the end of the day, if you are interested in those eSports titles, you will have no other choice but to use Windows. Plus, yeah, even though most games run just fine on Linux, there is a tiny minority of games still that just flat out refuse to run on Linux, and if you happen to be a fan of those games, well, tough luck. But overall, credit is where credit is due, Linux did come a long way since I started using it, and if you're ready to sacrifice a tiny bit of performance in exchange for not having Windows on your hard drive, you might want to consider that option. But if you do want to play every game on Steam, and you want all of those games to run with the maximum performance, and at the same time, you're feeling very uncomfortable about Microsoft snooping and everything you're doing, you might want to consider Windows 10 AME. So that's gonna be it for this video, and as usual, I do want to thank my patrons. Devin Merrill, Ray Piria, Mitchell Valentino, and everyone else who supports this channel. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.